The Moving Iron Podcast is brought to you by these great sponsors. Are you looking to value your equipment more accurately? Target the right buyers and close more deals? Reach your ideal customer? Then look no further. Fusible isn't just about ag data. It's about action. Our best-in-class solution empowers you to value your equipment accurately, make informed decisions, and find the perfect prospects. Ignite your dealership's growth at fusible.com slash moving iron dash podcast. Out in the field, every decision counts. You wouldn't plant without testing your soil, so why would you prospect blind? Introducing EDA, your one-stop shop for ag equipment intel. EDA goes beyond specs and prices. You get deep dive data on every piece of equipment like UCC filings that help track ownership changes and uncover potential sales leads. D&B firmographics, which help you understand the financial health and buying power of potential customers. Market trends that help you stay ahead of the curve and insights on equipment demands and pricings. With EDA, you're not just looking at data, you're seeing opportunity. You find the right buyer, sell smarter, and build lasting relationships. Visit edadata.com for your free demo and unlock the power of knowledge. For over 80 years, Iron Solutions has been your go-to data source for ag dealers, lenders, and manufacturers. Get powerful appraisal and value forecasting tools that fuel profitable decisions anytime, anywhere. Get your free demo at ironsolutions.com. Iron Solutions, confidence in every click. Today, there are many ways to finance ag equipment. But nobody delivers simple, fast, or flexible financing like AgDirect. Learn more about your options to buy, lease, and refinance equipment at agdirect.com. Valley Transportation has been hauling ag and construction equipment across the country for the past 33 years. Call Parker at 800-657-4910 for all your trucking needs. At Valley Transportation, our goal is to help you reach yours. When you partner with Axon, you immediately gain access to a full range of products and solutions designed to meet the complex needs of today's grower. We carry all major brands and sizes of tires and wheels. We specialize in large diameter wheels for large equipment. We have one of the largest OEM replacement wheel inventories in North America. Known for extreme flotation setups, duals, and triples, we have wheels for all makes and models of tractors, sprayers, combines, and grain carts. If we don't have the wheel in stock, we'll custom build, sandblast, and paint in-house. There isn't a more vast inventory in North America dedicated to helping dealers move more iron. With facilities on the West Coast and in the heart of the Midwest, leverage our 230,000 square feet of indoor inventory to solve any problem a grower may have. Move more iron with Axon. Moving iron in the 21st century. Hardworking people working hard for you and me. Moving iron time and time again. Through the years you'll find us here. What's rule number one? What's rule number one? Party. No, not party. No, it's not party. Unless you're on the Moving Iron podcast with Aaron Fennell, it's always a party. Aaron, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> I am doing good. It is, uh, as you can see from both of us, yeah. a little Football Friday action. Football Friday. Grid Iron. So where are you headed this week? Where you uh, got? Valentine, America, all the way to the 402. All right. That's Just... <laughs> Just, not not to compare with you, sir. And you're <laughs> we're we're seven hours from the other class B schools. <laughs> As, that is the truth. So tonight we've got a team, I think it's Lincoln Northwest, if I remember right. They're coming in all the way you know, Lincoln, Nebraska. So I seven. They're the the northeast side of Lincoln, obviously. Or northwest. Would, or northwest, northwest side of closest the, side possible. Yeah. So I mean they got a little we got a little advantage there, but it's easily on a bus, it's every minute of six and a half or seven hours. I'm surprised yeah. you guys don't charter, like just fly. Yeah. Everybody who plays in the metro area. Yeah. So I think, I think with the exception of maybe one school, McCook maybe this year. Yeah. Every other team is west or east of Grand Island. Right. So Grand Island's four and a half hours from here. 
uh, four hours and 45 minutes from here. So, uh, yeah, I think the football coach at the parent meeting said that, that they travel 3,000 miles this year to play football. That's awesome. Yeah. Really and is. we have every single game that's far away is mm-hmm. home. Oh, uh, yeah. And our away games are as close as could be, like Alliance. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, for you, that's uh, what, just a uh, five mile drive from. from six. Si- okay, six. Sorry. My Come bad. on, man. I just rounded for easy math. So, <clears throat> but yeah, so another looks. Uh, how's the uh, the mighty shattered Cardinals looking this year? Ah, decent. Decent. Yeah, we're going to go with decent. It's, we got, we got, it's, it's one game so far. So, yeah, yeah it's so early in the season, but, you know, Scott's Bluff looking at, I went, and they played um, Grand Island last week. Big victory there, 31 to 6. Felt good about that. Um, it's the most well rounded I've seen the team in a long time. So, defensively, nice. defensively look good, offensively look good. And, you know, usually this early in the season, you have a, a defensive, um, kind of the defense kind of overshadows the offense and I didn't see that this time so we'll see what happens this week but look good last week and excited about what the season holds for the uh Scottsdale Bearcats nice uh, yeah the the, uh the season the Cardinals ironically enough we should be the ostriches because we never throw the ball (laughs) the Cardinals typically fly ostriches don't they just run yeah we have we did we did a little flying last week. It was kind of neat. Yeah, it was it was nice to see the offense be more well rounded than I've seen in the past. But they've had pretty dominant running running games for some while there, but now they they've kind of mixed it up a little bit. So introducing yeah. Sammy Ball and the forward pass. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just need to have the quarterback be a welcome to nineteen thirty five. Everyone, <laughs> look at this. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. For sure, but everything else seems to be plugging along. So, love this time of the year. Love high school football. It's one of my favorite things. Kind of sad this is my my son's and your son too senior years. So this is it. Tell grandkids, baby. Yeah, this will be my last my last go watching high school football with someone in there that I that I uh, that yeah. from my from my genes anyway, right? Yeah. So it'll be it'll be a, a fun season. To watch things how they pan out. So absolutely. Let's jump in and talk a little bit about what our new venture here is. So still the Moving Iron Podcast, that you've grown in love. First time Aaron and I have had a chance to, to get together and do a podcast in a minute. Um, but we've decided that we're going to kind of rebrand this part of the Moving Iron Podcast and call it the Machine Shed. And our thought process here is that we're going to be um, hitting everything that you, every piece of equipment you could find on a farm. So you're talking, obviously, farm equipment construction equipment, wheel loaders, those kind of things, skid steers, those kind of things. Uh, we're going to have guests on that, that that are in that business and understand that business and talk about what's going on there. So wheel loaders, dozers, backhoes, excavator, all the stuff that you see that are popping up on farms more and more. Yellow um, out iron. there. The yellow, yellow irons coming in there. Talk about trucks and trailers, what we see happening in that marketplace. We have some experts that are going to come on and talk about that. We're also going to have some stuff that we talk about irrigation, you know, every so often, it's not going to be a, a, a heavy hitter on the program, but we're going to try to hit some irrigation stuff and kind of talk about what's going on there. Not a lot of used irrigation systems out there. Typically they've either gotten mangled in a tornado or they've just rusted out one of the two when they become used. So rarely is there a, uh, a one year roll cycle on uh, irrigation pivots. So that's uh, going to be something that we talk about as well, but so we're going to hit everything we can talk about. Nightmare. Oh God! Wouldn't it be? Oh, be dude! Awful. Don't now. Someone's gonna do it. See, because uh, you know. said it out loud. The wrong guy's gonna hear that and be like, "Well, I guess we're gonna roll pivots every year now." <laughs> just imagine that. That's, like, the, only, that's the only way we can fix acres, our tax problems. Yeah, acres of just used <laughs> um, pivots sitting out there. Uh, but so anyway, we'll have that, and we'll talk about that, and then we'll just talk about some other stuff we see happen out there as well. Aaron and I like. We're big fans of short lines, so we're going to do some short line reviews. We're just going on there. And we're actually going to be at the uh, uh, Husker Harvest here next week and uh, going to do a, a show from the uh, Big Iron uh, booth, which I think was booth number – I got it right here. Hang on. Hang on. The great and powerful Sarah Baker sent this to me. I want to say it is booth number 1133. Can't miss it. It's the big yellow one. Can't miss that one. 
So it'll be it'll be standing out there for the world to see. Look so. for the yellow shirts. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So they'll, they'll be out there. We do a, we'll be doing a show from there and uh, kind of highlight what's going on in the auction market. So if you're going to go to Husker Harvest, three o'clock on the tenth, uh, Tuesday the tenth, swing by the uh, uh, booth there, and if you got questions or whatever, we can we'll address them while we're doing it. So check it out. Um, Aaron, let's let's start let, let's start with this. So we're in the I would like to say the beginning of the throes of auction market for the end of the year, but obviously everyone's been auctioning everything off since uh, about July of last year. And we're starting to see things continue to move that way. We're seeing more and more stuff pop in there. You watch what's happening in the auction market. It feels like for right now, there's somewhat, it's kind of stabilized a little bit, but there, you know, you watch there's still some volatility out there. So as you're living and breathing it every day, what do you see happening in the auction market right now? Okay, two things. One, do you remember the soap opera All My Children on ABC around I mean, lunchtime? I knew it was there. I'd never watched it, though. Well, I didn't expect you to know all the characters. The beginning of the scene is a book like this thick. Yeah. And it says All My Children. And the show yeah. opens by opening that book. Okay. okay. It's very it's very well done. Sounds like it. Little no. little night, late, late 60s, early 70s. Little technology in action. Okay. Anyway, that's where we're at in the machinery business time of year. As you said, the beginning of auction season. It's like opening the great big book called From Now to the End of the Year. All right. So what I am seeing out there, I just had to throw that out there for some nostalgia, if you would. What I, I notice will. in the market of auctions is honestly a little slow up. Talking with some some dealers across the country, there's a little bit of pullback. Not in generality, as far as 24 terms are concerned. Which would be, if ever, if the dealers are pulled back a little bit, that would put it more into a steady auction flow than the glut we're dealing with. But then the next week you talk and somebody, a dealer who hasn't played in the auction land yet is jumping in with both feet. So yep. we're kind of at a, I, I beat my head on the wall every single day. Cause it's just, it's, it's almost like it's got to figure itself out. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, so uh, so there's always two phases to the to, what we, to these auction swings that we see right now right so you get you get the guys that get out early and they they put a lot of stuff in there and i you know you could you could run through the list of those names or what that looks like and who those people are and then there's the people that swear up and down that they're the dumbest people on the planet and now they're the ones jumping into the market when it's you know way lower than what it was when if, if they would have started out at the beginning um if you're taking a hard look at you know I, I get some calls from from guys that are you know like Wall Street analysts and stuff like that asking me what's happened in the marketplace, and I talked to a guy the other day about this, and there's a lot of people out there that are taking like, oh man, hey, this new machine is X, Y, and Z, you know, full list price, and look what it's selling for at auction one year later. Oh, I know. And I'm like, well, you gotta, you gotta. I mean, I hear you what you're saying, and that's the number that's out there, but there, there is a there's a dealer net number that comes into play in that, and it's everybody has the same dealer net number in the industry, right? It's, it's the same, the same number across the board. And, and more it, often than not, that X nine was sold under that number to begin with. I know, I know. And that's the other thing too. And, and I was, you know, walking through that whole thing, like, okay, so here's the, you know, there's discount structures that are involved in all these other things too. So that's great for fodder. And I'm sure, you know, when you're an, an analyst on wall street and you're like, Oh my God, a one year old machine selling for 75% less than it did when it was brand new. Well, <sighs> Okay, no, it's not. but it's it's not though. You know what I mean? And it's so. I mean, I think some of the stuff that you see in selling is is um, it's like, and you see stuff out there on Twitter too, where the guys like, oh my god, I can't believe. Oh, this it's all happening. day, and it it's tough. It's tight, right? It's tight. But when you have when you get two and a half years worth of trades all show up in one year because of COVID backlashes and everything else that come to play, you're going to have a huge number of machines show up that are late model low hour stuff that's freaking some of the stuff has got it's two years old and it's got a hundred hours on it right just because how it got when it got delivered right so you're seeing some of the stuff go through there and you know i've watched a lot of one-year-old combine sell for 
you know, between 385 and 425. And, you know, it probably costs somewhere in the neighborhood of 650 or 700,000 when it was brand new. Right. And, but you're figuring all the other stuff in there and it's not the gap that you think it is. Right. And I think that's the, that's the, the, the realm of that, the, the clarity that's not being told by some of the stories that people that know better that are telling those stories on the internet for well, get followers and everything else. Right. Here's, here's my take. Okay. okay. What yeah. I would love to see is as much as guys like to go and, and Twitter's where I see it the most. I'm pretty active on the ag side of Twitter. <laughs> Slink, sling and iron myself or trying. You don't ever see anybody, not one soul, pipe up and go, yeah, it lists. I'm going to use the the John Deere X9 because that is the one I see the most of. Right. Because in everybody's brain, that thing became the million-dollar combine the day it was announced. Okay. Right. That's it. And then they went and they priced it out on the internet. And with both heads, it lists for over a million. Yeah, it does. It does. Great. What would you buy it for? Exactly. I want guys to say, well, it lists at this, but I got mine bought for this. Where are those posts at? Oh, right. you mean there was a, you bought it half price to begin with? Right. Yeah. And then, oh, so you didn't, you didn't lose half a million at auction. Right. And I think that's the biggest misconception right now. Not close in yeah. all reality. And, that, and that's, the, that's the misconception with, with what we see happening. So if you go back and take a look at 2014, 2015, Nothing is 2016, bought at list in the nothing world. Is, nothing. Not, not anything is. If you take a look at. Not even a Z06 Corvette on a waiting list is bought at full MSRP. That is, though. That, that kind of stuff is. Well, that kind of stuff is bought at full list price. You shouldn't have it then. <laughs> that's, how, that's how this house works. <laughs> But if you had, if, if you go back and take a look at 2014, 2015, 2016, the last big auction cycle that we went through before things settled back down, and you go back and you do the same math there and you do the same math here, and you look at all the moving parts and how everything comes back together, you know what you have? The exact same percentage of, of new in 2014, 2015 at the same price that you see today. Now, granted, those dollars are significantly bigger. You know, same percentage, but different, you know, different dollars, right? The, the 20% of 14 <laughs> is a third of the 20% <laughs> yes. of now. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's the other side of this too. So is there still some bad things happening in the marketplace right now? Yes. Is there going to be some more struggles in the equipment marketplace? Yes. I think we're going to see the same, the same pattern that we saw in 14 through 16 and then 17, 18, things kind of settled out. And then 18, 19, 20 until COVID hit was just kind of like, this is what we're doing now. And I think the same thing is going to happen here through 26, 27. And then, you know, 27, late 26, 27, you start seeing the same thing settle out. And this is what we're doing now. And if, if I can interject real quick, Casey, sure. you could just as well say through eternity. Yeah, that's there, always will, gonna there be. will be problems until the end of days, because until a manufacturer tells a dealer, we don't care how much you knew you sell. We want right. you to do what's healthiest for you. <laughs> right. Until yeah, that's, that's like that discussion's had, which yeah. ain't happening. Right. There's always going to be problems because there'll always be chasing. Everybody, everybody, mm -hmm. everybody chasing that deal. You got to beat the neighbor dealer. Your, yep. your 30 stores got to beat those 30 stores, you know? Right. Yep. And other thing too is, you know, when commodity prices get high and guys start making a ton of money. And Farmers they're doing spend money. They spend their money and, they what, and they're to be talked into it. Yeah. They're buying equipment when they need to update equipment and when they can update. And yeah. typically that's when commodity prices are favorable towards that. Right. Oh, you start man. seeing that big swing because that's you know, tax deductions and things that come along with that. That's typically when you see a flip, a reversal in the marketplace when it goes from stabilizing the used marketplace and you start seeing, okay, we're going to buy, we're going to go out and get a bunch of new now and, and, and pump a bunch of used back into the marketplace. And we're going to start riding that wave up and then we're going to come back down and then it's going to be, and then the commodity prices fall. And then we have an auction cycle like this. It's, it's one of those things where because of the nature of our business of the farm equipment business, you know, you, you I've, I've had conversations with guys that outside of the ag world and, 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 you know, my dad, I grew up in the oil field business, but my dad sold oil field chemicals, same way, you know, it's just, there's a huge swing Broke in the market, man. you know, <laughs> all over the place. And 
it's it's hard to sit back and say, hey, we're gonna make we're gonna try to level this out to where you know we don't have the highest of the highs and the lowest of the lows. You have a three year run to make a bunch of money when you're farming, typically, and then you got a five to seven year wait list to make money again, right? And those things come and go, and they as they ebb and flow through the through the the market cycles and everything else that are and there. And if you can keep that five to eight taped together, it's yeah. coming again. Yeah, and it's just one thing after another right. that you have to make those things. And that's when we see these things. You see a big run up in new in, in new inventory that gets gets sold because hey, we're updating. Hey, we're gonna I want that one year old something or a two year old something or hey, I want to go out and get that five or six new pieces of equipment, and put them back on the farm. Those things all happen during those time frames. Now, there are some guys that are doing a yearly roll thing and they roll every year and they do or every two years or whatever the structure looks like. But regardless of what happens in the marketplace, but if, if you're looking at the overall cycle, what we see happening here, you saw basically from 2006 to 2012 was the longest stretch of, of, of on-farm profitability uh, that, for a while. But before that coming out of the late 90s into the early 2000s was was a disaster and you had this kind of you know big blow up of of uh of of money getting stuff on the farm and then you had four or five years of kind of just like oh my god what's going on here and then you know i'm sorry two three years of kind of what's going on here and then you had another four or five years of things kind of settling out and then you hit a peak again right this the, that one lasted a little bit longer than everybody else did but the same thing happened right so you had three years of of kind of what's going on to, okay, now things are leveling out again. And then we hit a, a peak. Again. It's, just, so it's, just, it's just so weird. Cause the, the, the 2020s version of that. Yeah. Is this. Yeah. There was, you know, so you a lot of black like swans. So. A year and a half up and six months straight down. All right. Whereas before that, we dealt with kind of this a little bit. Yeah. Yes. Like you yes. had time in all of 13 first half of 14. Okay. We're adjusting. We're right. kind of caught up here because it's not changing every 30 damn seconds like it is right now. Right. But And it was items, not dollars. But think about how many black swans affected what we saw happen in that. You had obviously COVID, right? Oh, a big deal. It's a one yeah. in a lot, once in a lifetime bundle of weird shit. Yeah. And then you had that on top of that. Okay. So on top of that, you had all the geopolitical craps going on. You had the Russia Ukraine thing going on. You had um, the various things that were going on with, with drought conditions and those kind of things all over the, like in South America and over in Europe and those kind of things where yep. all of a sudden there was like, Oh my God, we don't have hardly any, you know, stocks are low, this, that, another thing. And we don't know what's happening with, with Ukraine, uh, Ukraine and Russia. So, oh, boom, pff, you know, we had, Oh my God, you know, Kings. <laughs> you had, I don't know what, what, what wheat hit that time. It was, 13 bucks or something like that for a minute. It was like crazy through the roof. It right? was. And now it's like $4. Right. Or whatever it is. It's, it's way down there. It's back to um, being poverty grass. That's right. Yeah. And so you had all those black swans happen. Now you, so now you went from this huge, and then all the on farm income side of it, you had all the COVID money, all the different programs that were out there during that time frame. all that stuff happened. And, you know, you had just a lot of stuff hit, hit all at once, you know, so, now it's all that stuff's correcting, and here's what we see now. Now yeah. is when we could really use another pandemic. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it is an election year. Like, yeah. come on, man. Yeah, and then you throw then you throw interest rates on top of that, and that's yeah. a whole other thing, right? So now you got there's so much gas feeding the fire that we're starting to see things. I think somewhat settle down, and it's not so much that things have settled down to where everyone's you know, oh, okay, well this is what we're doing now, but it's settled down enough to where I think people have accepted. Perhaps we've hit a, say it. To some extent. Say it. Perhaps a we've hit a. Soft bottom. There a soft it bottom. is. Soft bottom. Yeah. A soft bottom. Um, so, yeah. So, I think I look at this, I, I look at this upcoming auction season to be really not much different than, I, than we've seen already, right? I think we've seen the typical, the volume of stuff we've seen selling 24 so far this year compared to the volume of stuff that we're going to be, that's going to be sold towards the end of the year. I don't think there's going to be a huge volume of stuff in December that we, that we, cause we'd already know about it, right? If there's going to be an auction, big auction in November, you'd already start or November, oh, yeah. December timeframe. There'd already be a huge amount of, of, of coverage out there. About there it. And, just, and I realize the whole year has just been auction fever. Well, rolling 12 back to lat. It started in October last year. Right. 
Super Auction Fest. We're still in it. So, and we know we didn't have, in 14, you had three tractors lose it. Took three tractors to lose a hundred. Right. Today it's one for one. <laughs> yeah. In, in in theory. So yeah. that that from a from a dealer sense, that hurts worse. Yeah. Because you have less spread. Mm -hmm. And as a dealer, we're sitting here at seven, not two. So right. it's it's a combination of it's, you know, basically it's a perfect storm the wrong way for everybody except the used buyer. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're right. You're right. And I, you know, so when I, so, I mean, yeah, by no means am I trying to paint this rosy picture of, oh, it's gumdrops and candy canes. Cause I'm not. No, but, but between, to... between your soft bottom that we mm -hmm. might have <laughs> your soft bottom, that's even better between <laughs> Casey's soft bottom and the sheer glut that's already happened this year. No, there shouldn't be any big surprises. It should be kind of a status quo, maybe compared to, you know, obviously compared to the previous five years, number of machines will be more, dollars will be more, but compared to the last rolling 12 months, nothing earth shattering. Yeah, for sure. And so I think as you look at this moving forward, just like what you just said, I don't see a big, huge, you know, collapse the market or anything like that i just think we're going to be more there's still going to be the volume of stuff going through that we see i mean it's still going to be that same volume the new normal um, the new normal yeah and for for this quote unquote cycle you know i think we're going to have to see a large amount of equipment get taken off the of the market before we start seeing any kind of of recovery into uh what that looks like so who knows i mean i think it's end of uh mid 26 you know into 27 and you see some kind of rolling stabilization right where you you know i, I live in, i kind of live by this 120 percent rule thing where auction value retail value you know once those things become outside of this this range you get these huge runs down in the auction value you know back and that's where we're at right I back think. it'll be what what we're searching for now is eight, 2018 2019 yeah right there was nothing spectacular you were having to be creative on on payment structures and everything else but if you work. are you can move it right yeah and i think and I, that's where we're going to end up at right leasing i think is going to make a make a turn back into that but man the way leasing structures are now i don't see a real other than how it ends on your balance sheet i don't see the benefit of doing a lease there's not there, every you know? company that offers a lease learned a lot of lessons in the last <laughs> yes, five they did. 10 years and every <laughs> every company that offers a lease is scared to death of offering it yeah and but and, and but uh, i i really can't think of too many lease structures out there where um the the guy the the owner of the machine at the end of the lease isn't having to make a decision on correct like there's no turning it back in. Like you, you're right. gonna buy it or you're gonna you're buying it out, you're refinancing it, you're releasing it, whatever it is that you're doing, you know, like there's it's just a glorified note. Twenty twenty five thousand know I mean? dollar payments and well, yeah. it ain't ours at the end, it's gone. <laughs> yeah. So that, so you start looking at it. so I mean it does the payment structures do have have some different structures there and those kind of things, but I I just I look at leases today and I'm like I guess I don't I don't get it. But Right. Unless it's unless it's a have to thing. Right. Yep. Yep. I think that's the that's the same thing that we're going through. There. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Now, that's a whole different conversation when it comes to leases, but we'll save that for another day. But you no, know, I think as I'm looking out coming into um where we're at now, uh heading into fall harvest, there is always the the last minute purchase that you see coming in. And it usually, you know, we see that through August and September typically. Um, obviously you don't see that much as that much stuff now, but I have talked to some guys that have said, Hey, you know, we've seen some pickup here over the last oh, um, yeah. 45 days compared to what we've seen. I think a lot of that too is price has come out. prices moved a little bit. Um, you're seeing some guys, that are stepping out there thinking like, Hey, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do X, Y, and Z now, because I know, I kind of know what I got 
in some in some explanations. What are you seeing uh, with the internet traffic that you're seeing here? Completely agree with that. Um, I just as well passed out carts at Walmart May, June, July, August for whatever reason been been good. On yeah. it went from nothing to good. Like yeah. everybody just sitting on their hands, waiting, waiting, sure. waiting. Okay. So what is it across the board? Tractors, yeah. combines, heads, everything, or what? What is it that you're that you're Com- saying? Combines, light, everything else ramped up. A lot of planters, a lot of heads, a lot of sprayers. Um, some tractor activity. Nothing mm-hmm. on not nothing on four wheel drives. Nothing on loader tractors. It's all been honestly the the problem categories that have had the most action. Which makes sense because on my end, that's what I'm the most proactive at, trying to get guys to buy, and they're just taking advantage of what I have to offer. Company-wise, that's our main focus, too, and likewise, guys guys are selling some. It takes an amount of creativity never even thought of before, but you, you... Stuff will move. Yeah. Yep. So that just shows you. It's a lot of massaging numbers (laughs) and such. Yeah. Making things. Can I do a split pay down payment in fourths? (laughs) I'd like to pay two payments now and one payment in 27, if that's okay. Right. (laughs) Be like, uh, yeah, we'll do it. Whatever. (laughs) Yeah. So I think there's some of that, some of that going on too, but like I said, you know, I think that's why, that's what I'm talking about. I think that there's. And that, that what, what I've seen the last 45 days on top of what, plus your soft bottom, plus what we talked about the future of the auction world for the rest of the year, that all kind of makes sense. You know, if yeah. guys are, guys are back to the table, at least peeking in the windows of the restaurant, maybe going to grab a table. Right. You know, because if, if if things were going to be continue a, on a huge slide down, they wouldn't, wouldn't be having, no, nobody would, would act have, unless yeah, it was you a would. have to. Right, right. Okay. And none of it's have to because very little stuff's very very little has a trade. Right, and I think that there's that's that's the the functionality of what we're talking about when you look at um, where I think I, that's why I think things are going the way they're going. Right, right. if you're looking at um, if there was some doom and gloom and, oh, my God, things are coming to a, a crashing halt, there wouldn't be activity like you're talking about right now. There'd be right. guys still sitting back going like, well, I know the dealer's got a couple and there's two or f- three or four of them coming up on auction. And I'm just going to wait and see what happens here at the end of the year and we'll move forward. You're still going to they're still seeing them. I'm not saying that's not happening because that is happening. But, right. you know, there there is some. Oh, yeah, I, I get I get a here. call every two weeks. Cheap enough yet? <laughs> I'm like, what? Like, you guys at auction yet? I'm like, nope. well, yeah. I'll call back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think that's the uh, that's that's the side of that. It's, and it's just going to continue to be like that. Dot big Irene dot com. Yeah. Yeah. And that's going to continue to to move in that direction. So. Yeah. Um. All right. So let's let's talk about one thing real quick. I think as as I look at the marketplace, I still see a lot of them out there. Um, more and more of them are showing up every day comparatively, um, even though they're some of them are moving. I guess when you're looking at real crop tractors, you know, that's kind of been the, the story of 2024 that no one, everyone wants to talk about combines, right? But really combines have had, from a actual inventory perspective, have had the least movement in one way or the other. Right. Comparatively to like we see real crop tractor movement. They they are their same market they always have been compared to yeah. tractors and planters are at the height of stupidity. Right. And so if you look at where things are at now, you're probably closer to like a 20, almost a pre-COVID level of tractors, right? And that is because of the amount of stuff that got delivered in, you know, like we said, two and a half years of stuff showing up. But the big difference is the, the dollar value associated with those row crop tractors comparatively. And what's, it feels like there's guys out there looking for that one and two year old something, 
but it also still feels like we're in that that same cycle of row crop tractors where if you have something what used to be 150 or lower now it's like 300 and lower but if you're in that in that 300 or lower range it feels like that's still that's where the market's gravitating towards i guess what are your thoughts on your on your i would argue that a just a couple grains of sand though on if you're if you're in like the the sub 300 hour one year old tractor you're right there are guys looking for that and it's kind of here here's what i've noticed a little bit if the guy has a trade he's coming to me cuz yeah it, and it's not it's not cuz he doesn't want to auction his the the one year olds are doing this on auction well when you have hundreds doing that that's so much pressure on right. everything else so your your 5000 your 10 year old 5000 hour tractor it's getting pressure too now that's still the shining star of of the ag world it still mm-hmm. is that's the easiest thing to sell but it's getting pressure so to maximize it oh well, the dealer is going to still give me a trade price and they're doing everything they can to get it down so they can get rid of it. Right. A scenario like that, that's where they're really showing up. And the tractors are moving without without having to be 350, I guess I would say, you know? Right. Um even on a even on a one by itself no trade scenario, there's still some of that. Yeah. Typically, that that guy has been the auction buyer for the last year, but and I I'm not sure why it seems. If it's, I'm trying to think of the right word here, auction overkill. They're kind of numb to it or something. I I don't know, but it seems like more guys are coming to the dealer table for that tractor than certainly than they were a year ago. Sure. I understand. Yeah. So, yeah. So and again, I think it goes back to um, we're seeing stuff move on the auction uh, at a, at a price point. Um, The dealership's trying hard to make sure that they can get their machine sold, that they're wanting to sell you, but also they want to put, as much as they can into the piece they can without you know cutting their own throats right. and, and i think that's that's the that's what we're trying to do so yeah yeah okay. if if you you know if even more so than the than the just straight cash buyer <laughs> the guy who has that three to five thousand hour five to ten year old tractor trade it right because you're gonna get you're, you're gonna pro- get a premium I for promise it. you you're gonna get more at the dealer than you are on the auction, and the dealer is going to bend over backwards to make it happen. So, yeah, for sure, that's my advice. Not because I'm a dealer or anything. <laughs> that's true though. That's <laughs> that's exactly where it's at. Because it's just maximizing dollars. That. You know, right. like yeah. my own operation, I will never trade a thing. Well, nobody wants I, it. I do this so. for, well, A, yeah, A, it goes to the end user. <laughs> yeah. And I have, I have 40 year old tractors. Why would I trade them? You know? Right. Yep. So, yep. It's Those just tractors money. are worth it's what mindset. they're worth. Yep. For sure. 100%. Okay, man. Probably a good place to stop here. And folks want to reach out and get more information about what it is you are doing. What's the best way to do that? Well, you can call me or text me. Uh, 308. 308- Seven six zero one one nine three. I am on Facebook by my name, A. A. Ron Fintel on Twitter by my name. And that's pretty much about it for social media. Right on. Casey Seymour, you can find me Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Moving Iron LLC. You go to LinkedIn at Moving Iron Podcast. You can see uh, the YouTube channel at uh, Moving Iron Podcast YouTube channel. You can go to... Uh, my my website movingironllc.com i i guess we're done worried about twitter i guess that's not or not twitter um 
TikTok. I guess they're not really going to throw that off of the landscape anymore. No one's no one's going to go blow that up, I guess. So you can find me on the TikTok at Moving Iron Podcaster as well. And you see that stuff there. You got the Moving Iron Summit coming up here in Nashville, Tennessee. If you are a dealer, Wall Street guy, analyst, whatever else, and you want to come check out what's going on in the world of uh, the equipment market space, great place to go. Check that out. Go to movingironllc.com. Click on the Moving Iron Summit tab, and you can see it there. So check that out. Be a good place to go. So with that, I'm Casey Seymour with Aaron Fennell. Let's move some iron, folks. Out. I respect what you've done in the combine world. But when you step in this ring, you're messing with Aaron Fennell. And that's something you don't do. Yeah, you're on a different planet now. You got your eyes locked on the world's most combine sound son of a... Our podcast is brought to you by these great sponsors. Are you looking to value your equipment more accurately? Target the right buyers and close more deals? Reach your ideal customer? Then look no further. Fusible isn't just about ag data. It's about action. Our best-in-class solution empowers you to value your equipment accurately, make informed decisions, and find the perfect prospects. Ignite your dealership's growth at fusible.com slash moving iron dash podcast. Out in the field, every decision counts. You wouldn't plant without testing your soil, so why would you prospect blind? Introducing EDA, your one-stop shop for ag equipment intel. EDA goes beyond specs and prices. You get deep dive data on every piece of equipment like UCC filings that help track ownership changes and uncover potential sales leads. D&B firmographics, which help you understand the financial health and buying power of potential customers. Market trends that help you stay ahead of the curve and insights on equipment demands and pricings. With EDA, you're not just looking at data, you're seeing opportunity. Find the right buyer, sell smarter, and build lasting relationships. Visit edadata.com for your free demo and unlock the power of knowledge. For over 80 years, Iron Solutions has been your go-to data source for ag dealers, lenders, and manufacturers. Get powerful appraisal and value forecasting tools that fuel profitable decisions anytime, anywhere. Get your free demo at ironsolutions.com. Iron Solutions, confidence in every click. Today, there are many ways to finance ag equipment, but nobody delivers simple, fast, or flexible financing like AgDirect. Learn more about your options to buy, lease, and refinance equipment at agdirect.com. Valley Transportation has been hauling ag and construction equipment across the country for the past 33 years. Call Parker at 800-657-4910 for all your trucking needs. At Valley Transportation, our goal is to help you reach yours. This podcast is proudly provided by Axon, helping dealers move more iron for the past 100 years. Find out more at axontire.com. Move more iron with Axon. Higher in the 21st century